You tell me you never had experiences with government ineptitude and bureaucracy. What about where they sent you to Alaska for no reason? Oh, it wasn't for no reason. We were building the road for the uh, natives to leave their sinking homes. They had to relocate because their land was being eroded into the sea. But why did they have Marines doing it? Why didn't they have anybody else? It was a joint tactical operation. There were Navy guys and there were Army guys. There was a lot of people there. So what was it, like, like an Army Corps of Engineers project or I, something? I think so, yeah. Oh. We got flown in by helicopter. We built the road and... The Navy got some fish for us. It was delicious. We had a fish fry. You got to ride on a helicopter? Yeah. What kind of helicopter was it? Ones that go whoosh, 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 whoosh. That's super not helpful. Was it the long school bus looking one? It was a C-130 rolling down the strip. No, that's a, that's an airplane, Mike. <laughs> that's a that's a four propeller airplane. That's the C-130 Hercules, which I believe is designed by Lockheed Martin. It's a Black Hawk, I think. No, U.S. Army, Air Force, and Navy use the Black Hawk. Only the Army is the Black Hawk, Navy is the Sea Hawk, and Air Force is the Pave Hawk. It was either the the Black Hawk, the Osprey, or a different kind of helicopter that I don't know, because those are the only kinds that I know. Was it a long school bus shaped thing with rotors on the top and the back, and then rotors on the top and the front? I do remember there being rotors on the top, that's true. Um, were there two <laughs> sets of rotors, or one set of rotors? I believe one. It probably was a UH-1Y. Was it? How many people could fit in the helicopter? Seven, maybe? Okay, it probably was a UH-1Y then. That one is the Huey that the Marines use. Whatever you say. So you did humanitarian things. Building a road. I don't know if I would say I contributed that much. I was there. I purified water. That's and then they were like, this water's disgusting. It's filled with silt. And also, I think there's an entire prawn inside my water bottle. And then you were like, yeah, that's a special treat for you. Yeah, that's Delicious enjoy. prawn. Mm, protein. No, we would take 15,000 gallons of water out of the ocean every hour. And then spit a bunch of it back, and we would have about 1,200 gallons of purified water so every you had, hour. you had a desalinator. That is the biggest thing when it comes to salt water, is getting rid of the salt. Getting rid of the salt. Have you looked at ways of survival techniques of how to get rid of salt in water? Yes, we were taught many different techniques, like evaporation and adding these iodine tablets, which we never use, but it sounds terrible. I think the iodine tablets are just to purify the water. It doesn't remove the salt from it. Oh, that's why all those people died. <laughs> oh, Mike screwed up. Mm. Whatever, the machines ran themselves. I, I, I would hesitate to say that I worked there. I would set up the machine, or if I was in the second wave, the machine would already be set up for me. And I would go out there, and the three of us would unanimously push a button together. <laughs> And then we would sit there for eight hours on our laptops and phones doing crossword puzzles oh and watching God. movies. Oh, that sounds awful. At least I was actually... I, I'm not going to complain. I am beachside in a quite lovely part of Alaska. I thought there were tons of mosquitoes, though. That's true. But when you're on the coast of the island instead of in the tundra, there are frequently less. Hmm. And you get a nice breeze coming off the ocean. You don't see any wildlife whatsoever, but... Why? I thought there would be tons of wildlife out there. No, this is tundra. There were no trees. Not, it was just tundra. We saw a couple of seagulls that followed the Navy boat, and that was you pretty much it. You didn't see any, like, killdeer? We saw some ptarmigan. What is, it, what is a ptarmigan? I call them tarmac hens, but they're ptarmigans. They're wild chickens. Are those the ones that when they're chicks, they're like green speckled and you can't tell the difference between a chick and moss? I didn't see it when it was young. No. I saw it when it was cursing the area. Because the first wave said, whatever you do, don't chase the ptarmigans. We saw some ptarmigans and we chased them. And the very next day, a huge storm showed up. and <laughs> Oh, that's why you don't chase the ptarmigans, because they'll, they'll curse you. Yes. They actually showed us video from... When they were harassing the ptarmigans, and the next day, half of their tents were blowing over, and you got five marines on one side of the tent trying to hold it down while the storm was trying to take it into the ocean. Yeah. Don't mess with the seagulls. They're sailors what been lost in the ocean in them. <laughs> so you're building a road that went nowhere. Again, I was not the one building the road, but the marine unit was. Someday we'll have to make a trip to that place in Alaska <laughs> so that you can see the road that you helped build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, this is so remote that you have to take a helicopter there. We'll get a boat. We have to fly to Alaska's main airport, fly off at a little 10-person airplane to the next place, and then fly from a helicopter there into the middle of nowhere. We'll, we'll rent a boat. <laughs> we'll rent a boat. All we'll right. Rent, we'll rent a couple kayaks or something. <laughs> I'm sure we can make it. 
we'll be fine to see the road that we built to, to help the natives move from their sinking lands to a different place that 10 years from now, you know, that's going to be sinking too. Probably. I mean, it's, if it's in the tundra, it sounds like it's probably on top of marshland, which man cannot live on marshland alone. Mm-hmm. Is that how that phrase goes? Yes, exactly. Trust not the man who builds his house on marshland, for it is not a strong church. The truth is they didn't build their town on the marshland. They built it on the permafrost, which used to be pretty strong. But then the temperature rose, and all the permafrost thawed, and now that once strong foundation is sinking into the ocean. I wouldn't recommend building on the tundra, at least. You probably don't want to do that. Hmm. There was one time where our sergeant said, Why don't we go for a hike? Oh, God. So, we hiked across the tundra. And I don't know if you know this about tundra. You step in, and you sink about a foot. That was uh, a bit exhausting. We saw nothing. It Uh was open sky and tundra. Hills of tundra. And that was it. I kind of want to go to Alaska. When people think of Alaska, they think of beautiful mountains. I didn't see any mountains. When I was in the military and I had nothing to do and I would get bored, I wouldn't make other people do stuff with me. (laughs) I would just go out in the woods and chop a tree down with the axe that was attached to the Humvee. Right, but we did not have trees. You could have gone out in the middle of the woods and just dug a hole in the tundra. You're going to tell me that I have to complain... You don't have to complain. I'm just, I was just wondering if there was something bad about it. There, there are Marines working 10 hour days to my left. They're building an actual road, putting in effort. And here I am sitting on my duff watching Adam Sandler movies while the water purifies itself. Would it like beep at you occasionally and be like, filter number six on pump three is going bad. You need to maintain that one. Not really. Every 15 minutes it would reverse its reverse osmosis and flush out its own filter. We watched it to make sure if we had to restart it for some reason, but it mostly ran itself. I I feel like the Marines could save a lot of money by (laughs) hiring a couple thousand less water purification specialists every year. Just have like one guy that runs the entire thing. Well, that was the craziest part of my unit. When I was in my unit, we had three guys who knew about refrigeration 20 guys that knew electrical work, and about 100 water purifiers. We had way too many water purifiers. Why did somebody have so many? Somebody had screwed up the paperwork because there were way too oh, many God. water purifiers. Somebody requisitioned too many water <laughs> purification specialists. Again, I, I told you that some people accidentally got sent to our unit because they wanted to be heavy equipment operators and were assigned as hydrological equipment operators. Oh, yes. The acronyms Battle crossed. Battle chestnut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did that for two training years. That was uh, my time in Alaska. And then you also went to Africa, didn't you? Yes, I went to Senegal. Did you get malaria? I did not because I took my anti-malarial pills. Did it give you weird nightmares? No, not really. I took malaria pills for a while and they gave me weird nightmares. I have heard that is a side effect, but I did not receive any. The one that started at the beginning was I was being chased by a bear and it was like I was trying to run from it and it was just like running through slop and I couldn't run from this bear. (laughs) And I would try to climb up a tree and the bear would start climbing up the tree after me and right as it was about to latch onto my leg, I would wake up. Mm -hmm. And then I would be like, oh fuck, that was awful. I don't want to have that happen again. That was terrifying. I would fall back asleep, and I would be being chased by the bear again. Um, well, who's to say that was caused by the malaria pills? It didn't start until I started taking the malaria pills. That's true, but I've had dreams like that before, and they have to start somewhere. I've already told you quite a few stories of my time in Africa. The Senegalese soldier that was hitting on our sergeant. Uh-huh. The, the bug orgy. Bug orgy? Oh, I didn't tell you about that one? I don't think you told me about the bug orgy. Oh, man. This was an experience I've never seen before, but apparently it's an annual thing. On one of the nights we were there, I was sitting around operating the machinery as I normally do. Yes. And all of these ant-like creatures come out of the ground, single file, and start flying up in the sky. And there is suddenly, within 15 minutes, huge mists of these flying ants just flying around everywhere. It's disgusting. And then they would land, and they would find a partner, and they would dig into the ground and shed their wings. 
So they had the wings to find a partner. Once they found a partner, they detached their wings and went underground again. Okay. And so come morning, after the orgy, you have all of these wings littering the area. What the fuck? A, he, it was a dust storm of wings. That's you could, disgusting. You could blow on the ground and these wings would shoot up. Yes, there were Ew. wings every. It was like a, a thin layer of snow, but it was bug wings. Ew! <laughs> Gross! Just burn them! Burn them all! Turn your water purification unit into a giant flamethrower and destroy <laughs> all of them. I called them ants, but they weren't really ants. The actual ants found the wings and took them back to their little anthill. Because there can't be any nutrition in that. Oh, you would you would be wrong, my friend. There are tasty, tasty nutrients in wings. Maybe to a bug they're full of nutrients, but not to me. It was also funny watching these bugs land after they had paired up, and they'd start digging a hole, and an ant would see them and go, Oh, free meal! And start grabbing these bugs. <laughs> you thought you were going to have sex. Nope. Mandibles! Mandibles! <laughs> that is just absolutely weird. <laughs> There was also the story of, uh, we stole a woman's poop box. Why, w- <laughs> one, why are you storing all your poops in a box? Two, why would you steal it? Here's the story. We were bored, as you might imagine. Okay. And we found a cardboard box. And being Americans, we think, that's just a piece of garbage. No one's using it. Let's throw rocks around. Let's, let's throw a ball in it and fetch the ball. And we did that for a few hours. And then... The Senegalese woman who lived nearby said, Can I have my box back? And she took it back. It was her toilet. What the f- <laughs> what that else poor she- woman! <laughs> the poor wo- We just saw this- A thing. bunch of fat, well-fed <laughs> Americans show up outside your house and they're just like, LOL, let's steal this guy's toilet. And they just take her fucking toilet and throw rocks at it. It was it was just a piece of cardboard no one was using. We thought it was garbage, but no, it was hers. She had cut a hole in it to poop. Oh my god. Was she like sitting on it? You know what? I don't want to know. Never mind. <laughs> I don't even want to know. 